الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ولي الصالحين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبع نهجهم وقتفى أثرهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار والعياذ بالله ويطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصهما فلا يضر إلا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا يا عباد الله يوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل ألا وإنه وصية الله للأولين والآخرين قال تعالى في محكم تنزيله ولقد وصينا الذين أوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم وإياكم أن اتقوا الله وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون in the name of Allah, the beneficent and the merciful. All praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him and thank Him and ask His forgiveness and repent to Him. He whom Allah guided, no one can mislead Him. And the one He misled, no one can guide Him. I bear witness that there is no God worthy to be worshipped with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the ally of the righteous. Nabi Abu Tazad Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a messenger of Allah and his servant. May Allah's peace and blessing be upon him, his companions and followers for the day of judgment and resurrection. And for what are the best of all speech is word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The most truthful saying is Allah al-Quran al-Karim. The best of all guidance and the best of doing all things is the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which is his sunnah. Every innovation in Islam is bid'ah, and every bid'ah is a path to stay or path to stay lead to hell. May Allah save and protect us. I command you and myself, my brothers and sisters, or servants of Allah, to be regardful to our duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to make a protection for ourselves against torment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to stay on the course of steadfastness and obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to avoid his forbiddings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us and commanded nations that passed to be regardful to your duties to Allah. He said in the deed we have commanded, those been given the book before you Muslims and you to be regardful to your duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, O oh, you who believe, be regardful to your duties to Allah. Have a Allah azza wa jal, truly as you can and should, and do not allow to die unless you are on the path of submission of all your wills to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muslims' way is to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Follow his commandment. Whatever comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we accept it wholeheartedly. Whether that will be in our human desire or that will be something that will be likely, likely to us. But we accept it and it becomes our hope, love, it becomes our way of life. In that, our progress. In that our well-being, our success in this world and in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't give us this Quran to be distressed in this world. No to be misguided. That is why he said in Al-Quran al-Kareem, Taha ma anzalna alayka al-Quran li We didn't reveal this Quran unto you to be distressed, to be misguided. It is for our well-being. It is to deliver us 
from darkness of this world, whether that will be darkness of systems, or darkness of cultures, or darkness of desires, to a delight that will lead us to satisfaction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and perpetual blessing dwelling in Jannah. That's why he said in the Quran, Kitabun Anzalna hu ilayka li tukhrijan nasa mina dhulumati ila nuri bi idhi rabbihim ila saratul aziz al hamid. This book we revealed it unto you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for one reason, to deliver men from darkness to the light. To deliver men from darkness to the light. And brothers and sisters, the world today, as it has been before, and it will continue, it is in darkness, until and unless Muslims take their job seriously to God. And with that, we still will have elements of darkness everywhere, because our job, calling people to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, delivering men from darkness to the light, will never end and can never end. Imagine if everyone would be misguided. What do we have to do? We'll be guided. What would, have to do? What would be the job, the task that we are anointed with? But that's not the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is not what he wants. He created indeed some to be portion of the hellfire. Wallahi, he created some to be portion of the hellfire and created some to be guided and created some to be the guide. And Muslims, wherever you are guided, you become a guide. You become a guide. وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ لَآمَنَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كُلُّهُمْ جَمِعًا If your Lord wills, everyone would have become Muslim. Believers, all together at once. كُلُّهُمْ All of them. جَمِعًا at once. But that is not what he wants. So brothers and sisters, you will continue. Your job of guiding mankind, delivering man, Delivering men and delivering systems to the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you can be happy. You can rejoice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessing upon you by guiding you to this thing. Muhammad tell them we attend this deen. We receive this deen. We are guided to this deen by mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his bounty. Let them rejoice that. It's better than all that they accumulate. If you are guided, Misguide of others would not, would not hurt you. Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu alaykum anfusakum. Oh you who believe, hold on to yourself. Hold on to your belief. Hold on to your belief. Hold on to your way of life. لا يضركم من ضل إذا تدلك. It will not hurt you. It will not harm you. Whoever is misguided, if you are guided, and Alhamdulillah, we are on that path. You observe your prayers. You observe boundaries of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and you return to Allah in repentance whenever you make mistakes. You know that there is no deity to be worshipped, to hope, to fear, to run to, to run from his anger and punishment, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of everything, the sustainer of everyone.
and provider of security to everything, everything. That is the only one that you hope, the only one you fear, only one you worship. You submit your own wills to him. Brothers and sisters, that is what is called freedom. You are not enslaved to anyone. Not even your own desire. Even your own desire you are not enslaved to. Your desire don't dictate you. Now you dictate your desire. That is what is called freedom. Freedom is not animalistic action. By any means, that I will do whatever I want to do, regardless of observing any boundary, regardless of people's right, whether you are infringing other people's right, that is not freedom. That is not freedom. Freedom of free people are free in their intellect and mind. And whatever they do, their conscience directs them and guides them. Brothers and sisters, what you have been seeing in recent years, which is burning of Al Quran Al Karim, is a madness phenomenon. Is Allah is a madness phenomenon that only shows sickness in mind of people and systems. Those think they may gain any benefit from it. How bad it is, brothers and sisters, to do something that you will not gain anything out of it. Anything out of it. Because brothers and sisters, that those born this Al-Quran al -Karim, it is only themselves their heart. They can burn every Quran in the world. And if they even want, they can spend all their wealth and print every paper in this world, print the Quran on each and every single paper in this world and then burn it, wouldn't hurt Islam a thing and wouldn't hurt Muslim a thing. This Quran is not what is imprinted in papers if they should know. It is what is settled in heart of men and women. Born in Quran, what do you gain from my brothers and sisters? Except provoking people's feelings. And what would that benefit you? That is why, brothers and sisters, what the government of Sweden is doing, it is irresponsible action, act of hostility, act of provocation. for over 1.5 billion people on this planet. What, how irresponsible can a system, government, and administration be just to provoke 1.5 billion people around the world, doing, permitting someone to do such, and calling that freedom of expression? Where is that a freedom of expression? So everybody, whatever they want to do, whether that will be instigation or it will be provocation, that is freedom. 
without thinking that it may infringe right of others. And this man that is born in the Quran al Karim, he is not doing anything but publicity stunt. He just wants to be nerded. He just wants to be known. Nobody ever knew him before. But so he just wants to be known now. That is madness. That is madness. So Muslims around the world should not even pay attention to them. Let him go buy more Quran. With his money, I suppose he will use his money to buy copies of our Quran. Let him spend all his money, if he wish, and bond them. He is burning himself. He is burning himself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wallahi, will take care of him. In a very simple way. The false brothers and sisters, you can ask him. And wallahi, he will live like that forever. Until he repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will live in constant and perpetual terror. Because of he, because he is in fight with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Abraham planned his way to destroy Kaaba, Abdul Muttalib was not a Muslim. Abdul Muttalib was, but he believed that this Kaaba belongs to Allah. Abraham took his camels. When he went to confront Abraham, he just asked Abraham, can you please give me my camels? And Abraham knew how dear this house is to them, people of Mecca. And because of that hostility, because of that enviness, that is why he wanted to destroy it. He wanted people to come to him for pilgrimage. What did Abdul Muttalib say? Abraham was amazed. I cannot believe this guy. He's coming and asking for his camels that he can go by and they die or he kill them and just sell them. He's not thinking about that al kaaba the reason why I came here. I want to destroy it. Abdul Muttalib told him, you know what? Please give me my camels. That's what matters to me. This Kaaba <laughs> belongs to Allah. He will take care of that. Allahu Akbar. Now, Allah will take care of this Kaaba. If Allah, brothers and sisters, took care of Al Kaaba, which is just a structure, what do you think of his taking care of Al Quran Al Karim, which is his miracle, an everlasting miracle? To the end of the day, Tayyum Al Qiyam. Wallahi, Allah will take care of that. This man and anyone who assembled simulating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of them. But it is mad, it, it is sad to see a system, a government led by people, those, their nation, their people entrusted them to guide them to act irresponsibly like government of Sweden has done. And it is hypocritical for Biden administration also, brothers and sisters, to consider that as an act of freedom, an act of expression, not rebuking it. It is mere hypocritical. And they should desist from that. They knew better. They knew better. Burning flag of any nation is irresponsible behavior, punishable behavior in many parts of the world. Because it just provokes feeling of many people. What about provoking the feeling of 1.5 billion people around the world? You call that freedom? What kind of freedom would that be? So brothers and sisters, but like I say, and as I always say, this world now and with many systems around the world now are administered, governed by people who is misguided. Some people or many of, many of them 
are overcome and consumed by Satan. They are in darkness themselves. What can they see? It is still our job. And before what we need to do, brothers and sisters, it is still our job to try and guide these people and these systems. That is why I always emphasize, and I will continue to emphasize, let's educate our children. Let's educate our children. They are our future. They are the future of Islam. They are the future of this world. For this world to stay in harmony, in peace, we need to have leaders with good awareness. أقول قولي هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. أنا الحمد لله brothers and sisters الحمد لله this masjid is among the masjid. Brother establishing Islamic schools now. Admission is currently going on in this masjid to bring your children to learn Deen and learn other subjects as well. So we are turning our masjid into schools. That is what we need to do. And we have to be very, very serious about it and invest whatever we have in these massages. Whatever you invest on this massage and these schools, brothers and sisters, you invest in an Islam and future of Muslims. Future of the world. Future of the world. Others are making mischief on the world. They are destroying the world. Wallahi, they are destroying the world. No man, regardless of their calling, Despite their constant and everyday calling, let's save the world, let's save the world. But we are destroying the world. What asset does the world has? Greater than human asset. What asset does the world have greater than human asset? If this asset is destroyed, if this asset is confused, if this asset is manipulated, if this asset is misguided, how can the world be guided? How can the world be fixed? Never. It's not going to happen, brothers and sisters. And that is what is happening now. Who don't even know his own or her own identity? Can he or she identify a thing? Somebody who is confused whether he or she is he or she. Wallahi, brothers and sisters, can that person fix anything? Think about it. <laughs> At least I know who I am. But if I am confused about my own self, don't even know who I am. Subhanallah. What do you expect from me? And that is what they're calling us now. They're confusing our children. I mean, deliberately making them blind of what they are seeing. No, what you are seeing is not what it is. It is something else what it is. But I don't even know what it is. SubhanAllah. So brothers and sisters, this magnifies our job and our responsibility to guide this world. And let's be patient and follow the, the right course. Teaching, teaching, teaching. Allah did not give us this deal, but to guide mankind. This is a book that will be built unto you so that you can deliver men from darkness to the light. By will of their Lord. But I do call in this conjunction of what is happening and I join scholars those called Muslim nations and organizations so boycott Sweden and their administration, I'm not limited to that, but at least to boycott their product. That will make impact on them so they can learn it, they can return to their good sense. 
Because this one is not good sense at all. It's not even a sense. To allow people to provoke others. What is civilization? Where is civilization? Why can't we live in peace and harmony? Why can't we just respect each other? And Muslim brothers and sisters, we don't even have to waste our time. And I did, made myself uh, tons of calculations. Should I even speak about this issue or should I even ignore it and let it go by? But to make you feel good of yourself and to make you understand that you don't have nothing to worry about this team, it will be taken care of by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to make you understand that what this man is doing is nothing but publicity stunt. And to make you understand that what government of Sweden and what government of Sweden and the administration in the United States and many part of the world, those are supporting Sweden, permitting this man to do this, are just a clear sign of the world's confusion and their need to be guided. That is the reason why I said, I mentioned make this a khutbah today. But other than the brothers and sisters, we should just ignore this totally and never even mention it. If the media is controlled by Muslims, we would urge them and advise them never even to cover these events anywhere it happened in the world. Let it stay in darkness as it is it should be. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ الَّذِينَ يَخُوضُونَ فِي آيَاتِنَا فَأَعْرِضَ عَنْهُمْ حَتَّى يَخُوضُوا فِي حَدِيثٍ غَيْرِ If you people see people making mockery, play with our ayat, our symbols, our signs, our verses, our ordinances, ignore them. Ignore them until they, talk, they go to something else. That would be the best thing. But Alhamdulillah, it's everywhere, you all know about it. This is what should be your stand. Don't worry, don't get angry, don't get upset. If you say, say, SubhanAllah, another man that we need to guide, another system that we need to save from total destruction. Because this won't help Sweden a thing. It won't help this man a thing. It will hurt Islam a thing. Even if he born the whole Quran, every Quran in this world. He wouldn't hurt his sympathy. It is his money that he's burning. Did he realize that? Did he realize that? He's the one by spending his money. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Sayyunfiqunaha, summa takunu alayhim asratan yomantiyam. They'll spend their money and then it becomes an agony on them in the day of judgment. Allahumma khatna adhanu bala. Wa israfna fi amrina. Wa thabira khadamna wa sunna khatna khatrin. الله عز الإسلام والمسلمين أذل الكفر والكافرين ودمر أعداء الدين وحمي عز الإسلام برحمتك يا رحمة الرحمين اللهم صل وسلم في كل مكان اللهم صلهم ولا تصل عليهم كل كل ما تكون ضدهم بحولك وقوتك يا رحمة الرحمين اللهم ردنا إلى دينك ردا جميلا اللهم ردنا إلى دينك ردا جميلا اللهم فينا أذل بنا إسرافنا في أمورنا وثبت قدامنا وصلنا وصلنا كافرين اللهم حرم المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم حرم بيت المقدس اللهم حر بيت المقدس برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين، اللهم صرف عن المسلمين في فلسطين، اللهم صرهم بنصرك المؤيد برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين، اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين، سيدنا ونبينا محمد بن عبد الله النبي القرشي الهاشمي، وارض اللهم عن الخلفاء الراشدين ابن بكر وعمر وعثمان، وعن بقية اصحاب نبيك وانا معهم اكرم يا اكرم الاكرمين. إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والباغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروا على نعمه يزدكم ذكر الله أكبر وعم واجبوا الله يعلم ما تصنعون قوموا إلى صلاة ويرحمون ويرحمكم الله